Welcome into the ASUG News Studio for our first happy hour and HANA session. We have an all-star panel here of great uh, analysts, uh, SAP executives, and uh, we're going to have a little fun here tonight as we go out and uh, talk about HANA for the next 15 or so minutes. want to welcome in the studio, I'll start over here, Dick Hirsch, who's an SAP mentor, avid blogger, and a great uh, guy on Twitter to follow, so follow him. Dick, welcome. Thanks. John here. Reed probably needs no introduction, but for those people who don't, John Reed of John ERP, Dennis Howlett's other half, <laughs> better <laughs> half, I would say. I appreciate that. John, welcome. <laughs> John Appleby, another John, uh, very well known for Bluefin Solution. John, Big welcome John. in. We uh, Also another guy on Twitter, except when he gets yelled at for making uh, bad comments on Twitter, but we love those comments. Thank you, John. Thanks, Tom. And Vijay, Vijay Sankar, who's Thanks. from SAP, and we appreciate him being here tonight. This guy's a monster on Twitter and blogging, and uh, <laughs> love to have you in. Thank you. All right, let's get this party started. Um, John, I'm going to actually start with you, John Reed. Oh, okay. uh, in a preview piece for the Sapphire Now here, um, you said SAP has to give customers a clear idea of what HANA can do for them today. Over the past two days, do you think customers have gotten that clear idea? Yes and no. I think there has been some progress because we're starting to hear from customers around what use cases are actually possible. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we, 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 we kind of began with a lot of kind of sports examples which may not be easily applicable to other industries because sports franchises have some passionate fan bases mm -hmm. and it can be hard to duplicate some of the customer experiences there. But, but I think the use cases are the key and we're starting to hear more of those come in. And live projects speak volumes. And as many HANA products as we have, we haven't had as many live ones, so I think that's helping. The HANA Enterprise Cloud, unfortunately, added another layer because the announcement was just last week, and mm -hmm. I think that's still sinking in. And so I think well-informed customers or the customers that hang out with us late at night at the, <laughs> oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. Those um, really well-informed. Those are the well-informed ones, but I think you really have to do a little bit of homework to catch up on the stuff that just came out last week at this point. Right. But VG, I'll turn to you. I mean, we got another option here from SAP, and I think that's important with the HANA Enterprise Cloud. Yeah, maybe it muddied up a little bit, but there are more options for people to at least start using HANA than we've ever had. Is Absolutely. that a good thing? Absolutely, but let me quickly add a, a comment to what John said. Last year, the question was more from customers on why should I use HANA? Mm -hmm. That seems to have subsided quite a bit and it's replaced by how do I do it? Mm -hmm. I think which is a great step forward for us. There are still a couple of customers who have asked me in the last couple of days, why should I do it? Mm -hmm. But the vast majority, like 20, upwards of 20 that I have met, most of them are asking how do I do it? Which is good for us as an um, SAP and uh, for HANA and, and, and the customers that the value is coming out. In terms of the HANA Enterprise Cloud, yes, this is one additional way people can deploy um, HANA now, uh, a lot easier. We do the whole thing for them. We can migrate over, we can do a managed service to keep it up and running, and you can migrate over your ECC on HANA, BW on HANA, non-SAP applications running on HANA, and so on. You're out there talking to customers, John. What's your, what's your sense of that here? Um, my sense is, I think, similar to what John has said. I mean, the, the biggest challenge that I think SAP has had this year on HANA is the number of options has just exploded, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, two years ago, you could do data marts. Right. A year ago, you could do data marts plus the data warehouse. I mean, today, the, you know, you can do your suite, you can do your data marts, transactional systems, it's enterprise ready. You can, and now you can deploy it on-premise and in the cloud. And I think the, the number of use cases is exploding. Plus, of course, especially with the upcoming release of HANA, we get this really tight integration with both Sybase and with Hadoop. I mean, there are so many options that I think SAP's got to spend a little bit of time clarifying the message so people know what to do and when. Well, I thought a lot of people were saying, wait, I already thought HANA, uh, Sweet on HANA was GA, but it is today and that was the big news. Right. Were you, Dick, were you, uh, I mean, do you sense a palpable customer excitement just because it is GA now? Or do you think, you know, customers have, you know, they've been, we've been hearing about it so much, it's kind of like, oh, it's GA, I, I kind of thought it was, or, or. Well, I mean, I think they, they need time. I mean, I think they need time to, to adjust, and I don't know whether the announcement that it's GA has the really big impact. I mean, I think the, the more important thing is that they really understand the, the ramifications on-premise, in the cloud. I think that's much more of an issue. 
Um, the fact that it's G is, 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 is important, but they got to figure out where do I fit into it? Mm -hmm. Where do I fit into this whole scheme of a uh, business suite on, on, on HANA? Like I don't own a racing car team, so you know, how do I fit? Right. right. I mean, wh I mean what, when do I decide to do it on-premise or when do I decide to do it in the cloud? I think that's one thing that's still not totally clear in terms of customers looking at this, this offering. Can I throw a little cold yeah. water on the conversation? Sure. <laughs> uh, play the cynic role and see if these guys can cheer us up again. I'm still hearing way too much indiscriminate talk about speed and I'm a little frustrated with SAP around that because my belief is that speed is going to be a commodity sooner rather than later. And I'm not saying that speed is not important, but all the conversations I've had with HANA startups, you'd be amazed how low on the list speed often is. It's often a combination of factors in computation abilities, predictive, real-time capabilities. There's a lot of other pieces to this puzzle, and when I hear Bill, Bill McDermott say things like, this is the fastest technology ever created in the history of humankind and stuff, I don't think that really helps because it makes you think like, SAP is so emotionally attached to this, they can't think of it from a customer's perspective, mm -hmm. which is a more sober perspective. Um, and I'm not saying there's not a lot of great potential with the product, but I'm, I am a little frustrated with that because I was hoping that they would take a little bit of a step back from that. I heard a lot of it in the last couple of days. I'm kind of with you on that, John. I mean, the, uh, the 100,000 club thing, I, I'm not a big fan, of, a fan no. of this because it's, it's, it's not meaningful in many ways. And I think it's, it's not meaning, it's a, it's a big number, right? And people get it. Well, do they get it? What do they get? Yeah. And, and in the case of, uh, of those organizations, they were replacing very long running batch processes mm -hmm. or something which happens quickly. Um, yeah. And the what is much more interesting, I think. What, what did that actually mean? Mm -hmm. And those stories haven't adequately come out. That would be nice. Right, like for example, in some cases, speed to, to, to market or speed to data can change how you have a relationship with your own customer base. So you're literally changing your processes. And that's where it actually, to me, I turn from like the curmudgeon side of John to the more kind of happy rah-rah John mm -hmm. when I start hearing that stuff. So that's what I really want to hear more of and maybe we will because to be fair to SAP, the conference isn't over, but I just heard a little too much of that so far. Well, tomorrow we got Hasso and Vishal and that should yeah. maybe give some more of those. Uh, you know, we've said, heard a lot about the end of batch processing. BJ, is that a selling point? I mean, do <clears throat> are people just so conditioned that well, I just got to do batch processing and it's going to take me forever that HANA can actually, that, that could be a big selling point that? It, it can. So it, it depends on what is the process. So a process like MRP, which let's say it could, runs for half a day, would mm -hmm. only work on the weekends, right? Mm -hmm. You can't take a half day off in the weekdays. Now if it runs in two hours less, as in like 10 hours, no big deal. It's still going to run on, um, on a batch mode over the weekend. But if it comes down to half an hour, mm -hmm. not only will it run probably daily or multiple times daily, this has a tangible business result, right? You don't need to hold as much stock, you're in, your working capital is not tied up and so on. And, and I agree with John, right? Indiscriminate use of speed, if that is how the message is coming out to the market, mm -hmm. probably we are not doing justice to HANA enough. The business value of HANA is where exactly. um, the, the speed matters, right? The speed aids some business value. Right, mm -hmm. also speed is a very IT-centric sell, right. and what we're looking for at Sapphire is more of a business look. What do you think? I mean, do you think that, that's, that's one thing? We're focusing on technology, what about the industries? There's exactly. an interesting quote today from the CEO from, from NetSuite that said that SAP can talk all they want about databases. I think the customers are more interested on the industries. I mean, I think that's, I mean, mm. you focus on technology, what about the stuff above that? Yeah. But I think that's, you know, it's getting SAP out of its comfort zone in many respects that you know, the technology, Vishal's let, you know, led this from a very technology-centric perspective. Right. But then if you let the marketers take over, then things are, you know, things get a little bit right. saucy there. So, I mean, there's yeah. got to be a happy medium. I'm sure yeah. SAP's well aware of this. Sure, I mean, we, we will get right. it right. I mean, the, it, there are a lot of messages that come out of SAP yeah. and it's natural yeah. that some get a little more prominence than others. You know, one question that I kicked around um, and asked SAP was, you know, if you're going to start asking uh, customers start replacing their databases and get rid of the oracles and the SQLs. Well, you know, for, for a long time SAP has used the SD benchmark for ERP apps, and they're not actually going to use that for HANA, that traditional app. John Alphaby, does that put customers in a bind? If you're going to ask me to wholesale replace my database system, what I'm having now, and you're not going to at least give me the SD benchmark, does that make things a little harder for someone like you who's out in the ecosystem? I, I think it, it's, that's a really tough question. Um, that's why I saved it for you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
the, the SD benchmark is never going to show the power of Hana, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it, it's no way because it's the stuff that you get that you couldn't have before, right? right. That's the first thing. The right. second thing is that customers need that benchmark to some degree mm -hmm. because, because with Hana, you still need to know how many sales orders can I do? How big a thing do right. I need? So um, SAP doesn't want to give the SD benchmark to Hana, and we know why. It's because Hana, you don't get the power of Hana on that, so it's not going to be as fast as you would like right. it to be. Right. You're, you're, not, you're not going to be the 10,000 club for a transactional processing. That's just not the way it is. Right. Um, so they're going to have to reinvent something which gives a benchmark which allows customers to know, compared to an IBM P whatever, mm -hmm. how big a HANA thing do I need right. to get transactional performance for 100,000 people uh, in, in Walmart or whatever. Right. And in addition to that, what are the extra things that I get with HANA that means that it's really cool? Right. Vijay, that's asking, SAP is asking customers to take a little bit longer term point of view with Han. I mean, if you look all around it, it's saying short term, you got to think long term with Han. Is that? This is not completely true. So, for example, in the business suite, for example, we have 20 plus scenarios that mm -hmm. have already been optimized that you can uh, make use of right now. Mm -hmm. right? So, make that investment um, and you can make that. Uh, business value realization right now. And mm -hmm. then obviously long term, the mixed workload scenarios where the transactions and analytics all happen together, mm -hmm. that's where the value is, which is also partly at least the answer to the SD benchmark question. SD benchmark was created at a time when the OLTP system was only uh, required to be optimized for throughput. Mm -hmm. And you used to dump the data into a warehouse mm -hmm. for the analysis. That world has changed but the benchmark is still the same. Mm -hmm. Now obviously there is an argument that, okay, you are now changing the, the rules or changing the rules of the game uh, for your advantage because mm -hmm. you are in the database business. There is some fairness to that argument, but the historical context is why we say that it's not a good benchmark for HANA. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a revised benchmark. And then we will make it a fair game, of course, that we don't want any unfair advantage in, in that. Dick, your thoughts on uh, the cloud news, with the HANA and the cloud. Do you think that's going to resonate with customers who maybe? It's getting better. I mean, it's still not there yet. I mean, I think what, what one thing is, is that they got to figure out really what the platform is in this whole sort of cloud environment. I mean, mm -hmm. because you have, now you have the enterprise cloud, which just came out, and now you have the platform as well. And I think how these things relate to one another, I think it's not totally solid yet, but it's, but it's getting better. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we need maybe a, a few more rounds with the marketing people, <laughs> and then we'll see if the message gets even clearer for the customers. What do you think, John? Uh, the cloud part has a long way to go in terms of clarity of messaging, especially when you wait, get into wait. the- Wait, wait, why? I mean, what's, let's play devil's advocate. What's your problem with the cloud messaging around HANA? Well, the developer message is, there's like SAP now has four or five different developer platforms cloud. The HANA people today explained to me, they attempted to explain the difference between the HANA cloud and the HANA enterprise cloud, but you didn't know those two were different things. Uh, do you see any issues there? Uh, I, I found out on Twitter there were some issues when I attempted to explain it. So the point is it's an evolving process, mm -hmm. and, and it highlights a key issue for SAP, which is HANA as database versus HANA as platform. When you start talking about platform, you're talking about developer engagement mm -hmm. and creating a seamless experience for customers and partners to easily build on that infrastructure. I think SAP is committed to that as well, but it's just going to take time to sort that out. I just don't think it's there yet. Right. So, well, unfortunately, John and I are being summoned by Jim Yeah, Stop. I know. I'm going to say, hey, you guys, <laughs> take those questions. Uh, last 20 seconds, each of us gets a parting shot. What do you want to hear more from SAP on HANA? Is there something you're looking for? You got to keep it short. Um, I'd like to have more information, really, on, as John said, the developers, how they fit into this. I think mm -hmm. that story isn't really complete yet. I'm just going to say stay humble. You've got a good thing going, but stay humble. It's not the best thing ever created. It's something very cool. Keep talking to customers, partners, ASUG, and it will eventually be what you want it to be. Awesome. John? Uh, for me, it's, it's simple. It's industry specific, line of business, big data use cases. That's, that, I think that's where it is, it's at. BJ? Try out and give us the feedback. You have a, a real chance of influencing the future of HANA. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thanks guys. You Great session and we appreciate you awesome. coming in. Yep. We'll be back in about 15 minutes with session number two. We'll get another group of people up there and we'll keep talking HANA. Thanks for watching. Thanks.